start with verse 7. Acts chapter 2, verse 7. Here's what God's word says. Completely baffled, they said, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each one of them, us hears them in our own and native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and the province of Asia, Persia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own languages about the great deeds God has done. You may be seated. Today's sermon and then it happened. Now last week we studied um, from the book of Acts and we read where Jesus said we will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon us. And the disciples were shocked and surprised. They were shocked and surprised because they had an idea of what they thought was going to happen. And they didn't see it coming. They didn't see what Jesus had planned for them coming. They had no idea that he was going to ascend into heaven and say, wait for the power. They thought he was going to set up his kingdom and it didn't happen that way. So they, they were surprised and they didn't see it coming. Now what we've got here is we've got 10 days after Jesus ascended is happens the day of Pentecost. This year, the day of Pentecost will be June 4th. So mark that on your calendars. And the day of Pentecost is actually a Jewish holiday called the Feast of Weeks. It celebrates the very first harvest of the, the wheat. So we've got Passover, and then 50 days later we have the Feast of Weeks where they take the brand new harvest and they crush it up in a fine flour and they bake two loaves of bread for this fellowship. Now, the word Pentecost comes from the Greek, the Hellenistic Jews, and what that means, these are Jewish people who had adapted Greek lifestyles. They were still Jews religiously, but they were Greek. They, they spoke Greek, they lived as Greeks, but they religiously were still Jews. And the word Pentecost means 50th. So it's the 50th day after the Passover, they call Pentecost. And in Christendom, we call it Pentecost because of what happened on that day. God poured out his spirit on that day. That's where the word Pentecost comes from. But the official word name for the day is the, the Feast of Weeks. As for the weeks that between the beginning of the planting and the harvest. Amen. It's also traditionally when God gave the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. So when Moses came down, it was 50 days after Passover when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Amen. So everybody kind of got the historical background of where we get those words from. Now, the two loaves that they did, they, they would bake these loaves and give them as a wave offering to, to God. And there were two loaves because one loaf represented the Jews and the other represented the proselytes or the Gentiles who had submitted themselves to the worship of the one God. And we know a lot of, a lot of Gentiles didn't worship God unless they had become proselytes of Judaism. See, back then, Judaism was a religion, not just a race. So there were people who made the decision to give up their other gods and follow God, and they were called proselytes. So the two loaves represented the Jewish people and those Gentile proselytes. And then, so the difference between the Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, and Passover is at Passover, they ate unleavened bread. Now, leaven in the Bible represents sin. So the Feast of Weeks, they ate bread that had yeast in it. Leaven is yeast. How many of y'all have ever made bread? <coughs> when you don't put yeast in it, what happens? It doesn't rise. It doesn't rise. See, somebody knows something about cooking here. Thank goodness. See, that means at Passover, you didn't put yeast in the bread, so the bread didn't rise. And that was to represent the fact that they were leaving Egypt so fast they didn't have time to let the bread rise. Amen? Amen? But what leaven represents in the Bible is sin. So Jesus became the Passover sacrifice because he didn't have any sin. See the difference? But at the Feast of Weeks of Pentecost, 
sinful people God would present as a, as a living sacrifice. Big difference there. See, Jesus was the sinless offering for us at Passover. He empowered us through the Holy Spirit to be a good offering for God. God promised the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That was a promise that John the Baptist made. That one coming after will baptize you with, with, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus said, you're going to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, wait for it. He said, wait for it. How many of us don't like to wait on God? Yeah. All right, come on. God will tell us to wait for something. We don't want to wait. Yeah. We sometimes don't. Ten days. They waited ten days. Some of us don't even want to make, wait ten minutes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We get on knees. God, I'm giving this over to you. And then as soon as we get up off our knees, we start to do it. <laughs> well, okay. God, you didn't move fast enough, so. Hello? That's important to understand. When God tells you to wait, wait. He knows what's going to happen. He has something planned out for you that's way better than you can plan out for yourself. Sometimes we, well, you know, I don't get called upon in church, so I'm going to go to some other church that recognizes me all the time. Maybe it's because you ain't with let God talk. Let God show you. Sometimes the hardest church to go to is the one God wants you to go to because God is trying to make you right. He's trying to get you right. Some, hey, I know what I'm talking about. Let me just talk about me. Some of y'all probably think I'm talking about you. I, I avoided certain churches when I was out there doing my own thing. Why? Because every time I go in there, the Holy Spirit convicted me of what I was doing. Uh-huh, you shouldn't have been outside. It seemed like the preacher knew what I was doing. I said, he, he be preaching at me. Oh, man. See, that's why I don't come to church. Yeah, I'm preaching, I'm preaching. That preacher didn't know me from Adam. But he was preaching at me because he, he God knew what I needed to hear. See, God knows. He knows what he's trying to tell you. Don't you be with that person. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got somebody better for you. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me go. <laughs> Sometimes you got to wait on God. We sing the song, He's an on time God, but then we act like He's not. Yes. How many of y'all have waited on the Lord and He's done something special for you? When it looked like there was no way out, God opened the door and opened and made it happen to you. Yes, sir. And you look around and go, and then it happened. Yes, sir. Boy, God showed it to show out. How many of y'all have people do you wrong and instead of you doing something back to them or talking about it, you just let God take care of it? And then when it happens, you go, wow, God. Because He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. I'm telling you, wait on God. So when Jesus said to wait, now interestingly enough, the disciples didn't listen to nothing else Jesus said. He told Peter he's going to deny him three times, but he said, no, I'm not. And then Peter just went on and did it anyway. Hello. They ran after he got crucified, hid, and then Jesus came back. They were always saying, and this time when he said, do what I said to do, 120 of them waited on God. Amen. They got in what they call the upper room and they waited. They went to the they went to the temple during the day and came back prayed at night. They were all in one accord. They were waiting for God's promise. And then it happened. See what it means with all in one accord is they all had the same mindset. We're going to wait on what God yeah. has for us. Yeah. We know God said we're going to receive power and we're going to wait on it to happen. And, and just at the time the bread was getting baked in the fire, and as, the, as they were doing the, the ritual for the feast, a fire started stirring up in that room. And that fire started working, and next thing that fast sounded like a rushing wind came out, and then tongues of fire landed on top of everybody. What did y'all do if y'all saw tongues of fire on, on each other's heads? Right now, but see, when you're waiting on God, you say, well, that must be what God is talking about. And next thing you know, it happened. Baptism in fire. They became baptized with the Holy Spirit and started speaking in languages they didn't know. The Holy Spirit started telling them what to say. 
putting words in their head, they just started saying what God said. And they had no clue. They, they were from Gonzales, Texas. All they knew was Texas English, and that was it. <laughs> Folks were standing around outside going, what in the world is going on up there? Why do I hear this Spanish and, and Egypt, Egyptian and Libya and all, all these languages coming out? These nut folks are from Gonzales. They should know all that. Hello? That's what they said. These are Galileans. How do they know all these languages? And they were hearing perfect dialect, all the deeds God had done in languages that those folks in the upper room didn't know. See how God can move? Didn't God, didn't Jesus say, you'll become my witnesses? When the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Samaria and to other parts of the world. See, during the period of time between Passover and Pentecost, thousands and thousands of Jews came to Jerusalem to celebrate because that was a holy holiday. So you had Jews from all over the world there for that period of time worshiping God. And some of them would become disciples because they heard what God said and they believed in what God said. Those who wanted who were seeking God truly believed and heard God. Mm -hmm. They heard their language. They heard, wow, they're talking about God. The folk that didn't really believe, they thought the fools were drunk. Mm -hmm. Make sure you got your heart and mind ready to hear from God. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you can hear something and think somebody's drunk. Wait. And the truth is, God is moving. Sometimes you can be in a service and say, it don't take all that. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You don't know how God's going to move. Yeah. You don't know what God's going to do. The folks gathered up in the, hundred, the 120 gathered up, they had no idea what God was going to do. They were just sitting there praying and one accord, God, wait on your blessing. Wait on your blessing. And then it happened. Mm. And they were never the same after that. Their lives were totally changed because they allowed God to move. By the way, Jesus' mother Mary, she was up in the upper room. I know there's theories out there that Mary was perfect. She wasn't. She was a sinner just like we are. She needed Jesus. And at some point she realized that Jesus was not her son. Jesus was God. And so that's why she was in the upper room. And she got empowered by the Holy Spirit just like the rest of them did. The other 119. So it wasn't just the disciples. It wasn't just the apostles. 120 obedient people just sat back and went, okay, God, we're waiting on you. And when it happened, they were never the same. Think about Peter. Y'all remember Peter? Peter, after the crucifixion, he was afraid. He realized he denied Jesus in front of Jesus and and he, he, he went into hiding and eventually went back to fishing. He didn't know where he was supposed to be in the body of Christ. Peter just, he, he just figured, well, you know, I'm done. You know, I betrayed the master. I, I, God will never use me because of what I've done. Anybody ever feel like that? God will never use me because I was on drugs. God will never use me because... Because I was having sex with the wrong people. God will never use me because I'm black. God will never use me because I'm a woman. God will never use me because I'm a single parent. God will never use me because of what I've done in the past. God will never use on, me now. because I was living with my wife primarily. On, God will never use me because of blank. Fill in the blank. Whatever your stuff is, God will never use me. And then the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him and changed him forever. And God will never use me became empowerment. He preached to the people. He got up with a boldness that he had never had before. He got up with a power he had never had before. Preached a five-minute sermon, and 3,000 people came to Christ. Okay. All right. Then it happened. God wants to use us the yes. same way. Amen. God wants to pour out his spirit on us the same way. He wants us, these folk from Gonzales, to be used by God the same way. What's the difference between us and them? Nothing. Nothing. They weren't a bunch of rich people. They weren't. 
Some of them were, but not all of them. They didn't all look, they weren't all the pretty people. The prince called them the beautiful ones. They were people who decided they wanted more of God than they wanted of themselves. And one Sunday, they got up in the upper room, and for 10 days away, God poured out his spirit on them. He wants to do the same thing for us. Yes. If we're wi willing and ready to let him use us. Peter went in one way, but then it happened. And his life was never the same. And that's why we know his name. Because he let God change him. Stand to your feet.